I'm Noah, and on this channel, I introduce you to China's beautiful ancient towns. Today, we're at a little place known as the first town on the Yangtze River. So I've just finished the three-hour, over 150-mile car ride from Chengdu to Lijuang, ancient town here in the city of Yibin. This place has been acclaimed as a reflection of Chinese culture and the cultivation of a national spirit. It's known for being a thriving little town on the Yangtze River, and during the Han Dynasty, this place was a fishing village. What this place is probably most famous for being one of the four war cultural centers during the Sino-Japanese War. In China. So I was a little bit nervous about this trip because this is the first time I've come to a travel destination in China with the intention of spending the night but not having a hotel booked because it's a little bit difficult for me to book a hotel in China as a foreigner. But it all worked out really smoothly. The people from the tourism center were very helpful. They pointed me directly to a hotel and while well, the hotel was a little bit hesitant at first to give me room, they did and it's a beautiful little room here with a nice view of the town. Now it's time to do the real work. Let's go explore. I'm currently standing on the outskirts of town. There's not much people out and about here. You can tell it's a very local area. But the thing I noticed is the air is just full of this alcohol smell. I bet they're making Li Zhuang's famous white liquor here. Li Zhuang is famous for being the home of three whites. White liquor, white meat, and white cake. I hope to try them all while I stay here. I did try Li Zhuang's liquor later that day, but I can't say I enjoyed it. That stuff burned like hell going down the pipe. So I've now hit a bustling little marketplace here in Li Zhuang, and it is the epitome of what you think of as Chinese market. Just people everywhere, crates of vegetables on the ground, a dirty little cramped alley. I have never been to such a raw, such a real market in my life like this. Looking up at the screens, the tarp, it's so dirty, it looks like it's been here for a thousand years. And then in the air, you can smell these like kind of burnt Chinese medicinal flavors. I love it. I have now come to a conclusion that meat is big here in Li Zhuang. As I mentioned earlier, Li Zhuang is famous for its so-called white meat. But besides that, in the market, I saw a ton of meat hanging out. And even I've come to this kind of residential area and they've got like sausages and meat hanging on hangers outside of people's homes. I've definitely got to try some meat while I'm here. What I like about Li Zhuang is that it's got a few temples by the riverside. So you'll be just taking a stroll by the river, taking in the views, and then look right behind you and you've got a temple right there. And that's what's brought me to Huiguang Temple. This temple in particular is quite special. Although today it's a Buddhist temple, way back when it was built in the characteristic style of a Chinese guild hall. But what I really admire about this place is the beautiful old wooden architecture. So I've currently grabbed a bite to eat at this nice looking restaurant right next to the Huiguang Hall with a nice little view of the river walk. And I have ordered the famed Bai Ro or white meat. I really like how the, the meat, especially the fat, is just so tender and soft and the fat will just very easily just separate from the meat. You dip it in the Sichuan red lava oil and at first I didn't put enough of that on and it kind of tastes a little bland. Make sure you really dose it in that and it's not bad. Can you believe that in addition to Li Zhuang, Sichuan has an ancient town called Liujiang, which I covered in a previous video. I very often mix the two names up, for example right here. Stepping out of this restaurant, I just learned that this restaurant is actually pretty famous here in Liujiang. They call it a street of famous dishes. There's an interesting anecdote that I don't quite understand the translation of. It says there was this Polish engineering professor at the university that used to come here and he he, quote, all he used to do was just pat on buttock, showing that he just wanted a dish of pork leg. Butt slaps going around here in Li Zhuang. Just adjacent to all the hustle and bustle and butt slapping going on on the main street is Shidza Alley. As I found on the internet and from photographs around the town, Shidza Alley is the iconic image of Li Zhuang. It's famous for, as its name indicates, the processing and selling of straw mats, but also for having the best preserved homes in Li Zhuang. As you can see, it's quite narrow, and with the locked up wooden houses on both sides and the cute little wooden doors out front, it just has this really peaceful 
peaceful and historic atmosphere. But Sheeds Alley is even more beautiful after the sun goes down, as I found out later that night. The relaxing vibes are at a whole new level. Sheeds Alley is hands down my favorite spot in Yichuan. I'm now standing in front of the Dongyue Temple, and this used to be the site of the Industrial Academy for Tongji University. During the Sino-Japanese War, Lijuang was a safe haven for many people, as well as universities like these, and even important historical artifacts. For instance, some antiques from Beijing's Forbidden City were moved here during that time. But later I learned just exactly what Lijuang had to sacrifice during this time. That night I met a new friend. She's the owner of My Coffee, a coffee shop on Shidza Alley. She told me that when Tongji University moved here to Lijuang, the town provided every facility they could to help the university, including temples like the one I visited earlier that day. Okay, so here I am with this beautifully lit building in the background and the riverside and the shadows of the mountains right in front of me. It's a wonderful view, a perfect little spot to finally try the white cake. The best part about it is it has the perfect amount of chewiness. It just bounces in your mouth in a way that's just so pleasing to the senses. Also, when you're in Lijuang, make sure to stop by My Coffee. Angel is extremely friendly, serves great coffee, and will tell you everything you need to know about Lijuang and China's fast-growing coffee culture. Leaving Lijuang, I had grown to appreciate this town as a very real and authentic place, but also as a bright cultural light during a very dark time in this country. If you're interested in more Chinese ancient towns, Click here. I'll see you all for the next great China adventure. <laughs>